The park should be empty. I live on the sixth floor of an apartment building. My bedroom window overlooks a large park directly across the street. That park is where I work, and it makes for a very easy commute. I only work part-time, and I do basic groundwork every single day, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. The park opens at 8 a.m. every day of the year, so I also unlock the gates. I never used to be a morning person, 8 a.m. is quite early for me to be waking up, so I usually nap for an extra hour when I get back into my apartment. I'm also hired to close up. One hour before it closes I have to lock up the toilets, and empty all the public bins into the dumpster. Twenty minutes before it closes I have to start informing people that they should head out, as the park is closing. Once everyone is out, I go around and lock up all the gates. There are five in total. I stay until 30 minutes after the park has closed. Overall I work for two and a half hours a day. The opening shift is always 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., but the closing shift changes depending on the month. We're in December, so since it gets dark early, the park closes at 6 p.m., meaning I'm in from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. It's a pretty easy job, and for the past couple of months, I've been looking for a second job nearby. Of course, this would mean I'd have to give up my 9 a.m. hour-long power nap, but I figured I could manage. It's about time I stop that habit anyway. I recently got into contact with a company that hands out freelance work. Walk people's dogs in the neighborhood, deliver groceries, paint fences, etc. It's exactly the kind of extra work I was looking for, as it's flexible I can change how much freelance work I do for the winter and summer months. The company is really great when you first sign up, you can give them the exact hours you're available. Last week, I opened the park up as normal, and did some freelance work after. It was three jobs, and they were all dog walking. This meant I spent pretty much the whole day in the park for once, as that's where I tend to walk the dogs. 5 p.m. came around and I went to do all the closing shift stuff. I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, and the last person was out of the park just five minutes after closing time. Anyone who has tried to get people out of a place that's closing will tell you that's not too bad at all. I finished up and was going to go home, but remembered that I still had one more freelance task for the day I had to deliver a carton of six eggs from a local store to a place a few blocks over. Easy job. I went to the store and picked up some eggs, the job was specific on which brand it had to be. I should have probably checked the eggs, as when I tried to pay for them, the cashier apologized for the eggs being cracked, and swapped them out. But I got them in the end and started making my way to the delivery address. I was walking on foot since it wasn't too far, and was extremely tired. Since starting the freelance work, there have been some days that I've been able to squeeze in my hour-long power nap. This was not one of those days. It seems silly that I can't operate properly without it, but it's just something I have to get used to. What happened next, I blamed on my fatigued mind. I now know that I shouldn't have. The store and delivery address were basically perfectly two blocks from the park in either direction. The park was exactly in the middle. As I walked past it, I noticed something moving from deep within, through the trees. I shouted through, hey the park should be empty now. But got no response. I figured it was nothing, since my view was obstructed anyway. But as I walked past one of the main gates, no longer any trees blocking my view, I could still make something out. There were no lights on in the park. Thick, dense darkness shrouded it at night. It almost feels like you should be able to reach out and touch it, like trying to walk through it would be physically impossible. Yet through it, I could make out a vaguely humanoid figure. There was no distinct color, in fact almost a lack thereof. Just a gray, blurry blob. Dancing and moving, changing and swaying. It looked familiar, perhaps like the kind of things you see when you look directly at a bright line and then away. More like an imprint on the eye than anything physical. I work here you need to leave it's trespassing. The way that it didn't respond or even seem to move at my request, I decided I was just being silly I think we've all seen things in the dark before. Especially when we're tired. So, as uneasy as I was feeling in that moment, I continued to walk past the park. The full journey along that side is about 3 minutes, and I spend most of it looking inwards through the fence. It seemed to move with me. I didn't pay a lot of attention to where I was walking and nearly tripped over a few times, especially when I nearly walked directly into a black cat. I made my way to the delivery address, delivered the eggs, and head back home. I live right in the middle of that side of the park, so another two minutes of being able to peer in. I didn't spot the figure at first. I walked past someone who lives on my street, and we stopped to chat, 
as we do occasionally. He was coming back from the same store I had been to, with some cleaning supplies. I asked why he desperately needed those, and he just said that he needed to clean a mess in his kitchen. I laughed, it must be a hard job if you need that much. I felt calmer again now I had human contact there's something so eerie about darkness. Being in the dark thinking I saw something. It just made me feel so alone. Having a conversation is what I needed. We said goodbye, and I continued walking for the last minute of my journey. But right as I got to my apartment building, I turned around before I opened the door, and almost collapsed from fear. Right up against the fence, clear as day, was a tall, it looked less humanoid this close up. Less like it was dancing and swaying, and more like it was shaking and convulsing. Its gray skin was pulsing and shifting, in a way that almost made me not notice the complete lack of eyes. I only realized it had no eyes when eyes began to form, right on its face. Its skin seemed to open on the head, allowing for two grotesque eyes to pierce through. I caught myself falling slightly, and got through the building door. I didn't wait for the elevator I ran up the stairs and didn't look back. I pass. I got to the sixth floor, got into my place, and peered out my bedroom window. There was nothing at the fence, and it almost spooked me just as much to see a lack of anything there. Like I was crazy. For the past week, I've phoned in sick to my park job. My boss keeps asking if I even had the energy to just lock and unlock the gates, I keep claiming I don't. I continue to do my freelance work during the bright hours, just hoping my boss and colleagues don't spot me. I just don't want to be in the park in the dark again. I've not even so much as peered out my bedroom window at night. But this morning, I tried. Today at about 4 a.m., I got up to go to the toilet. As I was about to get back into bed, I just felt like I should peer out again. I did, and I saw it. Right up against the fence, shaking, convulsing and pulsing, like it was almost trying to pass through the bars. Maybe it's just because I'm six floors up and couldn't see it properly, but sometimes it even looked like parts of it were passing right through the solid metal of the fence. I spotted a woman walking down the street, on her phone. I saw she was carrying a carton of eggs, and then it clicked I've seen her around before. I was pretty sure she worked for the same freelance company as me. But, she was about to walk right past the figure. Could she not hear it? I realized at that moment that I must be crazy. Nobody else can even see this thing. Then it grabbed her. Right as she walked past, it grabbed her. After that, they both vanished into the darkness. I don't mean to say the figure ran off they quite literally vanished. They morphed until they were nothing, as if this thing was able to just conjure up ways to move that were beyond comprehension. I was half sure that I was asleep at that point. Right then, I noticed, pulled up on the side of the road nearby a black car. A man and woman stood next to it, looking directly at the figure, talking about something to each other. It brought an odd sense of slight relief to know I wasn't the only person seeing this. I knew them from somewhere, but couldn't quite put my finger on where. But then it dawned on me they were the first people I met from the freelance company. They just watched in silence as one of their employees was abducted in front of them by a paranormal figure. No less. They must be involved, somehow. I don't know how or why, but they must be. Everything going on in my life suddenly slotted together, I just haven't figured out how yet. My park job, my freelance job, this figure, how do they all connect? Today, the woman was on the local news, reported as missing. I can't do anything who is going to believe me. If I tell anyone, I suddenly become the prime suspect. I do have another freelance job today, though. I now know the job is dangerous, and that my bosses do not have my best interests in mind at all. But they can't know that I know. My only job today is to paint a fence white. Usually, I only have to do some of the fence someone comes along after to do the rest. I'm going to write something to warn them. And then I'm going to quit. I've scheduled this to post in a few weeks, so that I can be long gone before the company knows I've said this all. If I quit, they can't hurt me. But they can still hurt others. I hope whoever sees my warning takes it seriously, and that I make a difference in some way.